ever, it's the Gallows Man! Witness action, humor, grotesque violence, and everything in between as the Gallows Man and his team try to stop the Nazi threat that has infiltrated their city. My producers are saying it's Adam West Batman meets Inglorious Bastards. Whatever the hell that means. Well, what are you waiting for? Help support this series by backing The Gallows Man numbers one through three over on Kickstarter today. There, I did the ad. Will you let me go now? Okay, okay, I'll say the stupid stuff. Baby, get back. Have you ever seen a dead body? No cap, these chicken nuggies be bussin', gay. Would you like to see a dead body? Morpheus, Dorpheus, Orpheus, go eat some walruses. Someone's getting a visit from the BB monster! There, I said it. I said it all. When will you let me go? In a world with so many stories, from movies to television, and of course, comic books. Comes a story that's only available in one of the three mediums I listed earlier. What you are about to see in this trailer is a character debut like you've never seen before. And now, we are just buying dramatic time by repeating the same shots that you just got done watching. We are truly very sorry about that. And now, introducing Rice Christopher. Recorded live from the secret underground lair of Crimson Cowl Comics and Collectible, this is the Crimson Cowl Comic Club Podcast. The following issues may contain spoilers. It's time to preview previews. I'm Anthony. I'm Kirby. I'm Katie. I'm Jim. And I'm Eric. Welcome to what I think is issue number 310. We have a lot of episodes that are all kind of collapsing over each other. 310 of the Crimson Cowl Comic Club podcast. Every time we record, we talk about comic books. Now, normally we talk about upcoming comic books wrapped in with books that we just read. But this episode is going to be a, a rare time where we just talk only previews. So this will be for the September catalogs for products 
coming out in November and beyond. And what we're going to do to ensure that there's enough time for people to hear what we're excited for, for them to go through the catalogs themselves, reach out to the local retailers of their choice, their preferred online retailers, wherever you get your comic books. We want to give you enough time to be able to do that. So we're going to cover everything, starting with Marvel, then DC, then jumping into the independents, going with uh, whatever order anybody has anything. So once again, September catalogs for November 2024 and beyond. We'll kick it off uh, with Marvel. And actually, before we do that, I'm going to do a quick promo um, in our last episode that we did for the YouTube channel. We've been doing the creator interviews for YouTube. Not only is there one for me, uh, all about Rice Christopher, the uh, comic book that at the time of this release is out there for anybody. So if you weren't at the Mighty Con convention and want a copy of my book, just reach out to me, comment on this video email latchkeykid at gmail.com that information's all in the show notes and everything and uh, we'll get a copy out to you there um, but our most recent creator interview was welcoming back a returning guest brandon ingram from dismay comics talking about the kickstarter for the gallows man issue number three so go to that episode check it out it's the youtube exclusive because of all the show and tell stuff and uh uh, check out that Kickstarter now, which is currently going from September 10th through October 9th. If you haven't read The Gallows Man, you can definitely get uh, copies of issues number one and two as add-on materials, including other stuff that Brandon has done for comic books, as well as other merchandise related to The Gallows Man. And the elevator pitch is that it's basically Batman 66 meets Inglorious Bastards, so a mature rated comic book. A lot of uh, great fun comedy mixed in with some blood and action and all that fun stuff. So I wanted to get those plugs before we start plugging other people's work. So check out Brandon over at Dismay Comics through the Gallows Man, now available on Kickstarter. And now the news. All right, now on to business, starting with Marvel Comics. Uh, the first one I had in my list here was uh, Marvel Holiday Tales to Astonish. Um, this is what I would assume is a one-shot. Uh, we have holiday hijinks in the mighty Marvel manner. First, you're invited to the Fantastic Four's holiday party, but who are the uninvited guests? Then, in a tale of Hanukkah's past, can Kitty Pride scramble to save the day while struggling to shop for gifts for her merry X-Men? And ring in the new year with Peter Parker and Miles Morales as only Spider-Man can. So this is a uh, one-shot, I assume, Marvel Holiday Tales to Astonish. Um, this is one of those that, you know, even though I do enjoy the kind of little anthology type things for Marvel and DC... I was thinking about cutting it, but then I saw there was a Kitty Pride uh, specific story, and I noticed they're calling her Kitty Pride. I'm I'm still catching up on the current X Men stuff, so I don't know if she went from Kate Pride back to Kitty. Uh, we'll I guess we'll find out, or maybe it's a a tale from uh, the past. Oh, yeah, it says a tale from Hanukkah's past. So ignore all that. Ernie, anyway, that is Marvel Holiday Tales to Astonish number one. Kirby. Deadpool Wolverine Weapon Extraction number one one shot. This is done by Ryan North and Javier Guerran. Collected here for the first time, the eight page epic story so big it ran across the entire Marvel line. When Wolverine and Deadpool are called upon to save the universe, we can absolutely rely on them to totally screw things up. Featuring fearsome battles and fights across space and time, Starring two men who cannot be killed, no matter how fearsome the battle, battles they fight across space and time. Will the multiverse be saved? Will Wolverine and Deadpool defeat the th thermatically confusing killer librarians of the romantic comedy universe? And most importantly, will Deadpool finally convince Wolverine to be his best friend? Explosions, deaths, epic battles across space in the superior Deadpool and Wolverine await you in this volume. Plus, a weird space god, too. Yep, that's everything? Okay. Yeah, something to follow up from the Deadpool Wolverine movie and everything. So. Sounds good. Uh, jump over to Katie. 
Yeah, so uh, we have Star Wars, The Battle of Jakku, Republic Under Siege, number one. Um, it looks like they're doing weekly stuff under this Battle of Jakku banner, so I may end up uh, grabbing these in trade. But uh, this is about... Uh, well, I don't really want to read too many spoilers, but this is post-Return of the Jedi. Uh, it's going to be written by Alex Segura and the Bias Defera, Raphael, and Taurine Clark doing the cover. It's $4.99. We'll be in shops on November 20th. I'm definitely a big fan of, like, the uh, New Republic in the EU. So I am open to giving this a chance and seeing what they're doing um, with this current iteration of the canon. Because there's a pretty big gap between... Um, you know, Return of the Jedi and The Force Awakens, but uh, definitely interested in the series, but probably will pick it up in a trade. Anyway, uh, check it out. Excellent. Jump over to Jim now. Uh, what Marvel comics? Are you going to buy all of them this month? Uh, I just might. Depends upon what you guys are liking. So I'll wait and see what you're interested in. Fair enough. Uh, Eric, did you have anything for Marvel? Well, only one that I just discovered. Um, it's not for me, though. Um, there's Sp Spidey and His Amazing Friends. Um, it's been a show on uh, Disney Plus for Disney Junior. And my son has really enjoyed it. It's kind of gotten him, you know, engaged in or starting his geekening. So now they're putting it in comic book form. So that's probably something I'm going to subscribe just for him. Other than that, mostly my ongoing series. Very cool. Uh, next one I'm talking about, um, I talked about the first one, but it seems like they're, uh, if you're talking about comic book for kids, it's not as for, you know, as young as the that target audience, but this is Spider-Man Homeroom Heroes, uh, the second issue. Um, first, it's lights, camera, action, as Peter steps up to help MJ and his classmates with a school video starring none other than Spider-Man. Add in an uninvited cameo from The Spot, who crashes their set and Spidey will be lucky to survive the school project. Then, join the young webhead for a trip to the museum, where Spidey must team up with the Scarlet Witch uh, in order to take down the meddlesome Mysterio. Featuring two 10-page short stories, this new series is the perfect int introduction to Marvel Universe uh, and the wall-crawling world of Spider-Man. And um, I don't have the price here, but I'm pretty sure it is a, uh, a lower price point because they've been advertising this for kind of uh, for younger readers and good accessible comics. And I was excited to see this. And uh, assuming how this one's structured with two 10-page stories, I assume that's what the first one is, uh, which is pre-ordered as well. But uh, at the time this recording will come out till uh, at the end of this month or October, I th October's comics, I think. Um, but yeah, so I'm real curious to see what they'll do with these stories. And I'm trying to think of any moments in the comics that I've actually seen Spider-Man and the Scarlet Witch kind of together like that, which I don't think is a normal combo you see. So I was pretty, uh, pretty excited to see what's going to happen. So that is Spider-Man Homeroom Heroes number two. Kirby? All right. Speaking of Spider-Man, well, more like something eating Spider-Man. But we got Venomore. It's Jeff. Number one, one shot. Yes. What's eating Jeff? And what's Jeff eating? That's right. The crossover event of the summer finally reaches the real star of Marvel Comics, Jeff the Land Shark. When Jeff's night of fun is interrupted by the madness of the Venom War, it's Marvel's goodest boy going to be is Marvel's goodest boy going to be able to keep his cool? Or will he give in to the symbiotes? temptations and eat someone's brains the team behind the hit infinity comic bring us an oversized all-new tale of the world's cutest predator and you got a thing that can't stop eating getting a symbiote attached to him that has to eat everything that should be pretty interesting <laughs> yeah kelly thompson and giri hiru which i believe this pronunciation they've done awesome work with the infinity comics with it's jeff We've read the collected edition of them, and I was so excited because I was ready to skip past this. I don't read a lot of Venom comics following Venom War, so I'm just scrolling because there's a lot of Venom War-related stuff. 
and I just happened to see the name Jeff and I'm just slammed on the brakes and scrolled up. I'm like, whoa, what's going on? So I was excited and delighted to see more Jeff. Jeff the Land Shark, everybody. Oh yeah. He's always here right at the desk. So <laughs> always keep Jeff close to your hearts and your Zoom windows. All right. Uh Katie, anything else from Marvel? Uh I was also interested in that holiday anthology. So um but other than that, I think that's it, unless we do any club picks for Marvel. Sounds good. And that's two uh, two votes for that Marvel one-shot. Jim, you saying something? No, I, I need to qu have a question for Eric. Mm -hmm. What was that Spidey title again? Uh, Spidey and His Amazing Friends. Just that? No subtitle or anything beyond that? Yep, that's pretty much just okay. what it is. They also have to... They also call the Miles Morales Spider-Man spin so kids yeah. don't get confused. I'm familiar with the show. I just was yeah. looking for that book because I have a four and a half year old great nephew that also likes and I characters. think I think and maybe Kirby can confirm are those the ones that they've been doing like the free comic book days where they always have some yes. sort of stories. So, so yeah, yeah, at least the last two or three years they had one come out for them and they're a lot of fun. Yeah, Jim, I might even have a couple extra copies laying around because usually at those things I pick them up and just kind of stockpile them for any kind of opportunities. But but yeah, that's all. That's a very popular show. They have a toy line and stuff too. So it's cool yeah. for the, the comics to be open. The boy has all the toys and everything. So I was like, maybe I can get him to read. There we go. Got to start somewhere. So either that or maybe uh, I'm not sure how old, but maybe the boy will like The Gallows Man, issue number three. <laughs> Comic. <laughs> Check out on Kickstarter now. Um, He's only four and a half, so okay. so by the time the books comes out and the campaign's over, he'll be four and a half plus a month. So come on, yeah. Um, he, can go, he can go trick or treating as news boy. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Um, let's see here. Uh, I'm forgetting where people were. So Katie was done. Uh, Eric, uh, Eric, do you have anything from Mar Marvel? Marvel. Nah, just my basic ongoing, really. So, yeah. just, just to remember where we were in the order here. Um, another one I'm excited about, we kind of hinted at the possibility of this existing um, when we had uh, D. Brad Gibson on for a recent episode or one that comes out after this. I don't know where the episodes are landing in September. What if Minnie became Captain Marvel? Um uh, what is the secret past of Minnie Mouse? Inspired by Ms. Marvel volumes, uh, volume one, number one through four, uh, our story chronicles or finds the Chronicle newspaper, uh, hold on, finds the Chronicle newspaper reporter Minnie Mouse tasked with an expose on a new hero on the scene in Duckburg, Captain Marvel, but Peg Leg Pete, Scorpion, uh, hyphen Scorpion, complicates her plans with an attack on the Chronicle building. To make matters worse, John D. Uh, Rocker Duck and the Beagle Boys <laughs> attack Scrooge McDuck's money bin. And when Captain Marvel shows up to stop them, Minnie discovers an incredible secret about her past. What is Minnie's connection to Duckbird's sensational new hero, Captain Marvel? So yeah, definitely focusing on the uh, original like Captain Marvel runs, which uh, would have been uh, from like the 70s. Uh, the cover here is... Uh, there's, there's a lot of fun variant mm -hmm. covers. The one that I'll be scooping up here of having uh, our mini Marvel, if you will, uh, jumping into, flying up into the air. Um, but yeah, these one shots have been fun. We've read the the Donald Duck Wolverine one. We've read the uh, Uncle Scrooge Infinity Dime for the club discussion. We have a Thor one that is either out or coming out soon, depending on when we get our copies. So yeah, I'm I'm excited for these and big Captain Marvel fan. So I mm -hmm. will be reading What If Minnie Became Captain Marvel. Yeah, I'm open to that one too. I figured it would be a club pick. So yeah, let's uh, make a note of it now. I'm going to take a picture of this here on my phone so I remember to let everybody know in the club that uh, we'll continue the trend with these uh, uh, Disney Marvel one-shot mashups. So. All right, my final Marvel one is Negasonic Teenage Warhead number one one shot. Spotlighting the lovable punk. Ellie Filmet Fimet. Ellie Fimister is under arrest 
When the time variance authority accuses Negasonic Teenage Warhead of a crime she has yet to commit, she'll have to go on the run to stop herself before the TVA does. It all comes down to a single moment in time. A choice future Ellie must face. Which means now, Ellie has one hour to find Yuki Ohara, her girlfriend from the future, who she's never met. Kiss her and save the multiverse. Good thing she she has allies like, wait, no, Deadpool is not going to be helpful. Is anyone else available? This is collecting the hit seri- web series, Marvel's Voices in Infinity Comics, Negasonic Teenage Warhead, number 44 to 49 for the first time in print, plus a brand new story by the returning creative team. I fell in love with the character and her girlfriend from the Deadpool movies, never read anything about her before, but I was happy to see that they brought this out. We got Andrew Wheeler, Corolla Varelli, and Eleonora Carlini on that one. Good, good. Yeah, yeah, definitely fun characters in there, and I I know I haven't uh, read as much as well. So, yeah, it's definitely a good companion piece. If you, Most people probably became more familiar with the, the movie's take and then putting the characters into the book. So, very cool. Um, and then, Katie, was that everything for you from Marvel? Did you have any other? Okay. And then back to me. Uh, let's see here. I already talked about that one, so I'm good as well. So I think we're done with Marvel. And I assume Eric is as well. Or yep. Okay. All right. So let's move on to DC. Let's jump over just to uh, here. Let's let's start with Jim. Uh, Jim, do you have any uh, DC picks? What, what books are you buying from DC? I'll and- probably read all of them, especially the Batmans. But, you know. Um, yeah, I'm not going to pick anything right now. Okay, fair enough. And uh, so we'll continue from this order. Eric, anything from uh, DC? Nothing that jumps out at me. Okay, so I just wanted to do that before we pick some of them here. So let's go back to the beginning. Um, I, I assume I'm getting the first one. Now, I made a little mistake with my previous order where I talked about my DC picks ahead of time for the podcast, but forgot to add them to the cart for when I finalize my order. And I know I'm like, oh, I talked about them and all that stuff. So I got to do some hunting on what I talked about and I have to pick up some of these issues. But I maybe talked about the DC Horror Presents, which seems like it's an anthology thing. So they have an issue too. Um, DC Horror Presents is a showcase of skin crawling legends focused on our favorite superheroes in the DCU. Written by some of the most terribly disturbed minds in the horror genre today, this anthology will be to die for with the horror fans. And the one thing that uh, caught my attention was just this very crazy crypto drawing here for one of the covers. This was just nuts. So yeah, this is part of the upcoming DC That's anthology awesome. horror line. I assume I was getting the first one, but um, due to my uh, mistake, I have to go back and... Uh, Make sure I get those things uh, when they come out. So that is DC Horror Presents issue number two. Kirby? I had no DC this month other than my ongoing. All right. Uh, Katie, anything from DC? Yep. So, um, oh, of course, it went back to the top of the page. <laughs> there was the holiday one that I wanted, but it's in the middle of the list and it went totally to the top of the page. So anyway, just hang on with me but it's got this really killer picture of uh santa driving his sleigh with reindeer and and one of the robins on i don't even know what that creature is and batman in uh, an airplane pretty awesome stuff uh but i wanted that one (laughs) name tbd (laughs) um let's see what I thought I I thought this was a DC one because as a DC uh, homage cover or homage cover, so I don't I don't think I have anything else other than my ongoings for DC. So um, this section's been a mess. Anybody have any lingering DC? <laughs> okay, so uh, we're gonna jump over. I'll kick it off with the independent publishers. Is where we can just jump around wherever we want. And I will mention that even though we didn't have as many Marvel and DC, 
Uh, that's been a trend for uh, 2024 for us, but we've been picking up a lot of indie stuff. We've had the ongoings of stuff, but definitely encourage people to check out the catalogs for themselves because there's so much to cover and there's there's so many things. Even if we were buying everything, we wouldn't even have time to talk about everything. So I always suggest going to the uh, your local comic shop, preferred online retailer, and checking out the catalogs for yourself as well. Over at Archie, there's Archie... Uh, Archie is Mr. Justice. Uh, let me turn this here. Um, a brand new four-part Archie premium, premium event limited series. Young Archie Andrew possesses the uh, super strength, super speed, invincibility, and undying urge to do what's right for the world. His only weakness is he needs to see the good in others, no matter how terrible they may be. His beloved hometown of Riverdale isn't the welcoming town it once was. Uh, there's a real, it's a long thing. So, um, this is truly a love letter to the best of Archie for fans of series like whatever happened to the man or tomorrow. I think it's supposed to be of tomorrow and invincible. Um, anyways, it's, it's Archie going back into their superhero stuff and for fans of Superman and fans of Archie, uh, you're getting a treat because one of the covers is an homage to action comics number one and that's why i thought i had on my dc pick right away and then i forgot that was an archie book so um i am excited for that one because that looks super cool so that is archie is mr justice number one kirby cadet dread tooth and claw digest trade paperback by rebellion comics it's done by matthew smith and neil gouge before judge dread there was cadet dread a keen fresh-faced apprentice and stickler for the rules with no idea of the legend he will one day become young joe hits the streets of mega city one for the first time facing off against perps monsters and genetically modified movie stars as he learns how to become the greatest judge the meg has ever seen zarjaz adventures await inside this thrilling new collection I like that they're going back to the beginning. So I'm going to check out that trade and see how it goes. Cool, cool. Katie? All right. From Image Comics, we have one of my favorite ongoings, Monstrous Volume 9. Uh, I love this series. I highlight it every time they put out a new trade paperback, but it's one of my favorites. It's it's weird. It's wonderful. It's unique. I don't really have great descriptions for it, but if you like, you know, books like Saga or, or um, you know, you like like high fantasy or Asian American inspired fantasy, I think you'll really like this book. And the art is absolutely outstanding. Sana Takeda knocks it out of the park every single time. Uh, I'm excited for it. It's going to be uh, in shops on November 13th, 2024, and it will be $16.99. And it's, of course, written by uh, Marjorie Liu and Sana Takeda. Check it out. I think you'll like it. Cool. cool. Uh, Jim, um, how many uh, comics are you getting from the giant independent catalog? Um, probably nothing. Nothing? Okay. Uh. <laughs> well, uh, we highly encourage you to uh, at least pick one thing from every <coughs> page. Like, it's got to be 500 items then, so. Okay, well, I'll look again. Uh, Eric, anything from independent stuff? Uh, actually, a bunch, as opposed to the Marvel and DC. Uh, first one, City Beneath Her Feet, number one, put out by Distillery. Uh, they were the ones who released Gone. So I don't know if this is going to end up being a big one. It's by James Tinian, the fourth, which, you know, we all know from The Silver Coin and Something is Killing the Children. A Bloody Love Letter to New York City. The City Beneath Her fit Feet is an action thriller love story for a new generation by lauded creators James Tinian and Elsa Charitier. Sorry if I murdered, murdered her name. Oh, Let's I go. like her work. Uh, Jasper Jane was the girl of Zara's dreams, but their brief relationship came and went in such an intense blaze that Zara was left thinking Jasper was just that, a dream. Years later, Zara is thrust back into Jasper's world. Unknowingly listed as her emergency contact, Zara must piece together the mystery of Jasper's life, all while being hunted by the assassins 
who once called Jasper one of their own. So this uh, this actually sounds like a interesting non supernatural story from James Tinian, which I think is a fir is a first in well at least in the works that I've read. So looking forward to seeing how this one is. They say they're doing a wraparound cover. I'm wondering if they're going to be like the big size that you can't stick in a long box like uh, Gone was. So it should be interesting finding out. Yeah, I think all of them have fit that magazine format type of thing. So I'm I'm assuming they're all going to continue yeah. to that. But um, let's see here. Uh, me. Um, Horizon Experiment Moondogs, number one. Now, Horizon Experiment, they had something in the previous catalog. I, it says it on the bottom. I don't know if it's an imprint or what it is, but um, let's see here. Uh, literary, literary horror icon and multi-award winning novelist uh, Tana Rive Du and hot newcomer Kelsey Ramsey present Moondogs following East African werewolves secretly living in Miami as this minority within a minority is caught in burgeoning war and threatens both uh, the lycanthrope and human lives. Um, yeah, I'm not familiar with the creators are, are but the, I like the title Moondogs and uh, one of the covers uh, was real intriguing there. I just love that in front of the moon there. So I'm going to check out Moondogs, number one. Uh, Kirby, I got Hornsby and Hallow number one from Image Comics. This is the next chapter of the Ghost Machine run. We got a teaser in the unnamed uh, teaser book in the back of it. It's good versus evil from the minds of Peter J. Thomas and Peter Schneeberg. <laughs> Keeping the cosmic peace isn't easy, but the opposing leaders of heaven and hell broker a deal that trades Zachary Hallow, an angel child, to a demon family, and Rose Hornsby, a demon child, to an angel family, and hope this truce will halt the winds of war. It's nature versus nurture, as the turbulence of adolescence comes crashing down on two teenagers who have no idea just who and what they truly are yet. A little teaser story was a surprise to me. Didn't think I'd get into it, but I will definitely check this out. Excellent. Katie? All right. So over at Massive, we have Assassin's Creed Visionaries Trade Paperback. Uh, a few months ago, I reviewed a single issue of this and actually really enjoyed it. Um, so I'm glad to see that, you know, they're doing more and putting them into it. Um, this is like a what if for Assassin's Creed. Um and I, I like the concept. So, you know, on the cover, we have some heroes from the classic movies. And it says it's going to be, you know, ancient Egypt, civil war, dystopian cyberpunk future and beyond the great beyond. And, um, you know, I'm a casual Assassin's Creed enjoyer. So if you're somebody who's like, I played all the games, I totally know the lore. Anything after Odyssey is dead to me. I don't know if you'll like this, <laughs> but if you're a casual Assassin's Creed fan, who's like, yeah, you know, those were fun games. I liked those. I think you'll probably appreciate this. I've read a few Assassin's Creed comics, and they're not earth-shattering by any means, but they were all pretty fun. They were decently good. You know, I liked it. I'm looking forward to this one. Assassin's Creed Visionaries. It's in shops November 20th, 2024, and will be $17.99. And there's also an Assassin's Creed comic uh, set during the Vietnam War, if you would like to check that out. Um, I think I'm skipping that one, but you never know. Assassin's Creed Visionaries. Check it out. Cool, cool. Eric? All right. Uh, another one I found was uh, Spectrum, number one, by Mad Cave Studios. Melody Parker is losing her mind. She's living on the streets of Seattle during the WTO protests of 1999. She is seeing things. Androids, aliens, pigs in high fashion, and a creature named Echo, one of the sustained elemental beings with the power to alter reality through music. She invites Melody to join her as she brings about the end of the world. As Melody tries to escape the strange woman, suppressed memories from across vast spans of time flood into her awareness, bringing her very identity into question. So, you know, it's just one of those things I clicked on, I, re you know, read the description, and it's like, interesting. I usually like some of the cerebral comics, so... 
just take a look at this one and see how it goes. Excellent. Uh, super excited. This is officially out there. We are talking about Jungle Drama, Salty Beaches. Uh, this hey. is by Tunes by Troy, Danny Harrell, Eric Marshall, Natsuki, uh, and Eric Marshall's list there. It's uh, summertime in the jungle, and Chama and Lana hit the beach for a much-needed vacation. Will they find true love, a summer fling, or head home with sand between their cheeks? It's all good times and tan lines in jungle drama, salty beaches. And don't miss the keen variant covers by swinging superstar artists. Uh, so we talked about Jungle Drama, which is a uh, at that point a one shot story that we had all of the creators on. Uh, it's probably one of the biggest episodes we've did, you know, just as having the entire creative team there. And uh, it was cool to find out that we are getting more Jungle Drama. So this will be another issue, and uh, it's probably safe to say if you didn't check out the first Jungle Drama, this will probably be very uh, new reader friendly. But highly recommend checking that out. Um, there st may still be copies if you go to keenspotshop.com if your local uh, retailer doesn't have any uh, available to order. But yeah, very excited to check out Jungle Drama Salty Beaches. Yeah, I'll be getting that too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Best of Mondo Gecko number one one shot by IDW Publishing. He's green. He skateboards. He ain't no turtle, dude. It's the best of Mondo Gecko. Relive Mondo's best moments from past to present. It's going to be totally radical. But yeah, he's one of my favorite characters from that world. So. That was a cool cover, too, I remember seeing in that. So Yeah, with the Hiss Fits instead of the Misfits t-shirt. <laughs> uh, Katie? All right. Over at Dark Horse from the Universe of the Witcher, we have The Witcher, The Edge of the World. So this is adapting a short story that was published decades ago now in The Last Wish. Uh, creative team is Andres Sapkowski, the writer and creator of that character. Magdalena Salik doing the art. Tommaso Benato and Chris O'Halloran rounding out that creative team. Uh, I read a few few of these they've done it i think this is the third adaptation of some of the short stories where they're taking it and putting them into a graphic novel and they've been good and like you know both good in terms of like hey this art looks nice and it matches the tone of the story as well as a good adaptation where you know they're not completely riffing and doing their own thing uh and you know with sapkowski on the team it's a good bet it's going to be a faithful adaptation is what i'm trying to say and they follow that story well so in this one um, Geralt and Dandelion are, you know, in between jobs for a while. They're both pretty broke and they're like, we got, we got to do some work or we're not going to have money to eat. And they're out, uh, along the fringes and they find a, a town that is being haunted by a devil that is not letting them collect their grain. So they go out to, uh, investigate this devil and determine if it's real or if it's superstition. And it ends up being neither of those things. And it's, um, uh, well, I don't want to spoil it, but it's a, a surprise and it tells us about the um, how other races besides humans are treated in this world and what it means to live in disharmony. Anyway, uh, check it out. It's going to be in January of 2025. That's not a real year. January 8th, 2025, 1799. And there's two others available right now. Anyway, looking forward to it. Excellent. I think that that's probably based off of uh, one of the a story from the Witcher novels. It sounds very familiar. Yes. So it is. You're correct. Yeah. Yep, you're on track. All right, uh, Eric. All right. Uh, next, I have uh, Firefly Zoe Elaine. Yeah. Basically, the war between the Alliance and Browncoats is hell, but when a bank heist is abandoned for a fateful team-up between Mal and Zoe, an altruistic bond is formed that sets the stage for future fans know and love. So, you know, I I know that uh, the main story has ended for in the, the boom rung, but I think they're just trying to help out the Fire 5 fans after having to go so long without new content after uh you know after serenity so yeah i know i've been like i've liked a lot of the one shots and yeah i think boom's doing a pretty good job 
fleshing out the universe a little more, as well as, uh, what was it? I think it was Flyer, Fireflies Versus, where we got to see an alternate mm -hmm. reality, yeah. kind of like Under Shadow. It was That one was really good. So looking forward to it, because I've yet to see a Boom Firefly, you know, title that I haven't enjoyed. Yeah, the Versus issue is uh, the top of my stack over there. I'm excited to dive in. Uh, Dark Horse did the comics prior, and they did great. I've said it time and time again, but every Firefly comic I've read has just been awesome. And for people that uh, miss the show and you know miss having just the one movie, there's a whole lot more Firefly out there in the comic books to continue going through adventures and seeing some different takes and angles and stuff. So always, always been a top supporter of that stuff. So cool, cool, cool. Uh, let's talk about. Josie and the Pussycats, the annual spectacular. Uh, brand new story. Josie and the Pussycats are no strangers to the supernatural, but things get extra scary when they're tasked with playing a monster ball. They might need a little help from some unlikely sources. Alexandra Cabot and Sabrina, the teenage witch. So we are getting Sabrina thrown into this. There's a fun little cover here of uh, Sabrina sitting there on top of the music notes they're playing above them. But, uh, yep, uh, I've been uh, liking that they've been doing these annuals here for Josie and Sabrina and everything when we don't get as many of those stories as we do with the Archie characters. But uh, I'll take whatever they get us. So that give us. So that is Josie and the Pussycats, the annual spectacular for 2024, not 2025, because once again, that year is not real. So let's go to Kirby. Yeah, that's on my list too. Good. We got Silverline Christmas Special 2024 from Silverline Comics. The spirit of Christmas has taken over Silverline with this special holiday offering of Christmas short stories featuring characters from our popular series Trumps, Kalis, and Twilight Grimm, and celebrating Silverline's first year of publishing. From Trumps, a diamond with no number who lost his family to the battle, seeks to control power, but his searches lead him to the, to the most dangerous of places, the Joker's Keep. Straight from the pages of Kalis, an, amb an ambassador's daughter is suddenly and violently kidnapped by terrorists. Scott Anders, the man out of the place and time, is desperately called in to rescue her. Will Scott be able to do the impossible in time for everyone to have a Merry Christmas? And finally, Twilight Grimm meets himself, forced to enter into a battle that could bring peace to hollowed heights, even if it is just to celebrate Christmas. I can't remember if I read anything about, from these characters. I might have checked out Twilight Grimm, but I figure they look interesting. So. Alrighty, Katie? All right, my last pick from the big catalog is called Pixies of the 60s. You really got me now. It's by uh, an ensemble creative cast, and it's basically a premise of uh, what if fairies came to uh, London in the 1960s to experience the big city and the mod scene and all the music and stuff and find out that life is not all sunshine and roses and it's going to be following two characters, Anon and Alith. Um, so it looks like two stories in this book. It's going to be $22.99 will be available September 18th, 2024. Um, honestly, that's such a great title and I I love that whole aesthetic and that time period is very interesting to me in terms of art and pop culture and how all that interlinked with society at the time. Um, this looks pretty cool. Pixies of the 60s. You really got me now. Check it out. It's a great name for, for a title there. So. Mm -hmm. uh, Eric. All right. Uh, last one I got from Independence. You probably might have seen this one coming. Uh, Power Rangers Prime number one. Uh, sorry, lost it. There we are. Power Rangers is back and better than ever. Prepare yourself for Prime, a bold new era featuring a brand new cast of characters, excitement, and attitude in the vein of Marvel's The Ultimates. Get ready to experience a new team, a new mentor, and a threat to Earth unlike anything you've seen before. Angel Grove University students face a difficult choice after crossing paths with a fugitive straight out of legend. 
Consequences for hiding her are dire, but her existence may not stay secret for long. Groundbreaking Power Rangers writer, writer Flo Melissa Flores ushers the iconic Rangers mythos into the next era of adventure. Basically, now they just uh, Boom has just ended their long-running Power Rangers run, and I guess they're deciding to go in a new direction, possibly darker, because uh, a lot of the the uh, Power Rangers issues that Melissa Flores had saw some Rangers being killed or demonically possessed. So this should be interesting. Very cool. All right. And then there were two. So between me and Kirby, we'll finish off the independence here. Um, the Walking Dead has had a deluxe series going on since the series ended. I read the whole series and the original black and white issues as they were coming out. Um, but to capitalize on keeping The Walking Dead on the shelves, they started doing the uh, colorized versions of the issues. I thought that was a rather cool idea and uh, definitely great, you know, gimmick to keep selling Walking Dead. But there is one issue in particular. I think I bought the Michonne debut because she was my favorite. I think, I don't know if that was like issue like 17 or something pretty early on. Um, but the other one that I've been waiting for is issue number 100 which is now in the catalog because that is when negan shows up on the scene in the comic book and so issue number 100 was pretty uh a pretty huge milestone not only for the independent comic hitting triple digits like that but for introducing the character of negan and changing and doing very crazy stuff that issue originally was from 2012 so now uh you know just over 10 years later we have uh this issue coming out again but this time in full color so this is uh this extra size chapter contains one of the darkest moments of uh rick grimes's uh life and one of the most violent and brutal things to happen within the pages of the series finally in color uh, the deluxe presentation is a stunning full color and also features an installment of cutting room floor and creator commentary. So I'm assuming they've just been doing back matter throughout these and kind of giving some extra, extra incentive on top of uh, colorizing these famously black and white comics. But I'll be dipping into this one to get uh, the colorized version of Negan showing up with the Walking Dead Deluxe number 100. Kirby? I just want to say, though, I think this issue will be so good that even Glenn will keep an eye out for it. <laughs> Too early. <laughs> All right. We got Silent Night, Deadly Night versus Valentine Bluffs Massacre, number one by American Mythology. This is done by James Kahorik and Ev, Ev Cantata. Two of the biggest slashers franchise from the 1980s returns in a no-holds-barred, one-shot battle royal. The Killer Santa from Silent Night, Deadly Night, and the Bloody Miner from Valentine Bluffs Massacre are patients at the same insane asylum, being studied as they recover from injuries that should have left them dead. But something sinister is at play in the halls of this institution. A serial slasher has put these two titans of terror on a collision course that will rock the holidays this season. So, I like the little combination of those two. I think it's going to be a one-shot, the way they say it in here, one-shot battle royal, but we'll see. All righty. Uh, this one I'm very excited for because of the creative team. We're talking about Flash Gordon Adventures. This is a graphic novel here. I think the subtitle might be Flash of Greatness, if the if this is what I'm reading this right. Uh, Flash Gordon Adventures is an all-ages series by the award-winning creative team of Art Baltazar and Franco. Perfect for fans of Tiny Titans and Itty Bitty Hellboy, join Flash Gordon, Dale Arden, Dr. Zarkov, and their allies from Lexray as they battle the evil tyrant Ming the Merciless. Readers will be thrilled by Flash Gordon and his friends' zany adventures while enjoying valuable but humorous life lessons learned about friendship, teamwork, and how alien world gravity affects the digestive system, why a lizard machine is important for making new lizards, and why Zarkov develops a way to make fake beards for Ming to wear. Uh, first time I read the synopsis on that, that is great. Um, Art and Franco, we talk about them all the time. 
I have no attachment to Flash Gordon. I've never watched anything or read anything Flash Gordon related. I'm going in completely blind, but I'm going in with the lovable storytelling that Art and Franco do so well with all of their different properties. Kirby on the video format, if you're watching on YouTube, showing off because uh, there is a current Flash Gordon series that has just launched, which I assume is the more just like, you know, serious adult tone and, you know, whatever. And, uh, but yeah, coming this November, uh, Art and Franco are uh, landed a huge deal with this with doing the Flash Gordon Adventures graphic novel. So I'm very excited to have my first taste of Flash Gordon be through the lens of Art and Franco. Check it out from Paper Cuts. All right. This is my last one. You got the rest of mine called out. So we got Scary Christmas, V Killer Klaus uh, from American Mythology. I'm guessing that's supposed to be verses, but. The horror days wouldn't be bloody without the return of Scary Christmas. This year, three creative teams bring horrifying tales of yuletide terror to your doorstep with the series that isn't afraid to slash the halls this year. Told in stark black and white and homage to the horror comic magazines of the past, Scary Christmas is guaranteed to put the ho-ho-ho in horror with more terror than you can stuff a stocking with experience the scariest time with these twisted tales that will choke you with tinsel and strangle you with blinking red lights. Uh, James Kahorik from Freddy vs. Jason vs. Ash and Todd Livingston from uh, starring Sonia Devereaux and G.O. Parsons from Willie's Wonderland are your evil elves spinning bloody horror holiday horror this Christmas season. Scary Christmas has been a lot of fun, all the ones I read so far, so I was happy to see him bring one more back. But that's it for me then on the independence. All right, I'm almost at the end here with uh, two final things on my list here. Headless Horseman Halloween Annual. This is something that I normally probably would have passed by, but then I saw there's a Francesco Francavia awesome variant cover which I'm showing up on the YouTube screen at this moment. And uh, just seeing how he always plays with oranges and yellows are great. And this works awesome with the silhouette and the trees and everything. So, um, and then I'll say this so that Kirby doesn't have to, but this is written by David Desmolchin, um, and then art by Lucas uh, Kettner. Um, like the urban legends and folklore frights of yore, the Headless Horseman is coming back to haunt you once more. Ignore the creaking footsteps. Don't mind the whistling wind. Pull your eyes away from the shifting shadows and tiptoe through these spine-tingling stories. The Headless Horseman returns, and this year, he's coming for you. Halloween Anthology of Standalone Horror Stories. So that is the Headless Horseman Halloween Annual coming out, I'm assuming November. Um... Uh, from Dark Horse Comics. And the last one I have is more so just a call out to the cover. I have yet to read issue number one because it's in my next shipment. Kevin Wolf talked about it on a recent episode of the Comic Club, but the Universal Monsters Frankenstein uh, wraps up issue number four of this mini series. And the reason I'm calling it out because I have to mention this amazing Jenny Frizen cover right here was just, uh, just. I want this as a full-on poster right away. Like, this is so good. So I'm excited to read the series, especially after hearing Kevin uh, talk about it on the on the podcast here. And uh, seems like a, a very cool, unique take. And then Kirby had some insight with what each issue is, like, surrounded from a different body part of a piece of Frankenstein's monster or something. Yeah, I think they did the uh, brain, the heart, and then I'm guessing two different limbs. And, and all else without... Uh, the, the opening title, without reading into it, it just says, The Eyes of a Demon. So maybe they're focusing on the eyes for the final. But as a miniseries finale, Frankenstein, but awesome Jenny Frizen cover. So uh, we talked about all those. Uh, Jim is buying at least one thing from every single page of the Giant Catalog. But we highly suggest everybody go and, once again, check out your local comic book shops. Reach out to them. Get the catalogs, flip through them. There's so much stuff. There's things that we didn't mention because they're ongoing series and things that we're reading. Um, but there's too much stuff out there for us to buy everything. 
So always a blast to go through those catalogs and check it out for yourselves. All right. Wrapping it up with the plugs here. CrimsonCowl.com for info and original web comics. Go to Crimson Cowl Comic Club on iTunes to subscribe, rate, and review for the audio version of the podcast. But let's say you're listening to the audio version. You're listening to this now and you're like, well, I didn't get this um, interview about Anthony Latch talking about his comic book or Brandon Ingram talking about his comic book. Well, those are YouTube exclusive just because they they lend better to the uh, the video feed for the show and tell. They get to stay in the video feed because the audio feed gets recycled after like 10 episodes or so due to the free account and everything. So go to Crimson Cow Comic Club over on YouTube. Most recent uh, update is the Brandon Ingram from Dismay Comics talking about the current Kickstarter at the time of this recording for uh, the Gallows Man issue number three. If you haven't read one and two, well, you can get them as add-ons as well. It's a fun uh, four-issue miniseries. Um, it is Batman 66 meets Inglorious Bastards. So a lot of great comedy with a lot of great blood. And it's a great uh, independent comic book there. Support the creators. Brandon was fun. Had him on. This is the second time he's been on the show. So check out The Gallows Man over on Kickstarter, which runs uh, from September 10th through October 9th, if I remembered correctly, because I've said it a couple times now. Yep. September 10th through October 9th to get in on your copies. And I think that's one of those things where, especially with the Kickstarter of this nature and you get into issue three if you want a copy of this got a pledge for the kickstarter um it's not one of those that you're going to see in previews or anything like that unless they strike a big deal later on down the road but highly suggest supporting them now when they need it the most uh let's see at the time of this recording we are one week away from mighty con in milwaukee but when you are watching and listening to this that happened already we've already thanked everybody for coming out to mighty con milwaukee uh, David and I were there to sell our comic books. We were there to sell our art and prints and all of that fun stuff. Leftover collectibles from the Crimson Cowell comic book store uh, that uh, this very club was formed from. So thank everybody for coming out. If you didn't go out to the con, you didn't have a chance, you, you aren't local, you had something going on, uh, you had to work. It's your weekend of work, <clears throat> Eric. Um, if you uh, had all of that going on, and you wanted a copy of my very first self-published comic book called Rice Christopher, the Wednesday afternoon special. I was going to say adventures. It is called the Wednesday afternoon special. This is my first ever self-published comic book. All ages, fun, activity, includes coloring sheets. I don't know how many copies I have left at the time of this recording because I am waiting to sell them. But uh, if anybody wants a cop copy, they will be available because all I have to do is hit a reorder button so these won't be limited um i will get one to anybody who wants one and if you do you can just comment on wherever you're checking this podcast out yeah you can reach out to me on the social medias uh the email directly even uh whether it's the crimson call comic club at yahoo.com haven't advertised that in a while but i think that's it otherwise uh latchkeykid at gmail.com and that's l-a-a-t-s-c-h so yeah all you have to do is just send a message in any way, shape, or form, and you'll get my attention, and we'll square up and get you an issue of square up. There was no pun intended there. Um, to get you an issue of Rice Christopher, who is a crispy man who goes on adventures. All right. Uh, then the other plugs as we get back to the normal. Uh, now that we wrapped up Mighty Con, I'll be looking into the future for the final uh, months of the year to see where else I'm going to take uh, myself and Rice Christopher. So stay tuned for future appearances, but Milwaukee Mighty Con has been our most successful show, our most exciting show. I love going there. It's been, that's where we started as far as artists. So uh, I'm excited to expand as well. Kirby, you have a spinoff podcast called Under the Call of MS. Uh, you've been going through some uh, structural changes and how you're organizing the podcast. So let people know what's been going on over there. Yeah, we're making it a little more easy and fun. We're keeping the comics to the YouTube channel, and we're going to move the MS stuff over to just the, our old podcast channel. i still putting videos out, just not as many as I want to. <laughs> Maybe getting a little behind, but I just got addicted to $2 live auctions for comic books. Now they do $1 one specials every now and then, but 
picking up some awesome things that I've been showing off, like Captain Carrot and the Zoo Crew, and this beautiful life with Archie twister cover that has that Dorothy Wizard and Oz feel to it. Just, I was really happy to pick that up. But yeah, I'm finding some really fun things in there that we've been talking about. We'll be reviewing reviewing them in the near future. So check that out and see what we're going to have new to come. Excellent. So yes, follow Under the Call of MS wherever you get your podcasts, as well as YouTube and all the other social media platforms for all of that content. Uh, I have artist pages on Facebook and Instagram, Anthony Latch, L-A-A-T-S-C-H. I have a Cartoonist by Night, which is a drawing show, uh, a couple weeks off uh, for recording for the sake of uh pushing out this comic book but one of the recent episodes was me talking about this comic book and the creation with the cartoonist by night crew we also have a creator interview on youtube hanging out with the crimson call comic club crew um talking about this recent cartoonist by night episode as well we had winston gambro on um i've been so there's a lot of episodes in the air so i'm trying to think if there was anything else that i'm missing but uh yeah, so a lot, a lot of good stuff over there. So just subscribe to Cartoonists by Night over on YouTube as we are uh, trucking along in our second season of drawing and discussing pop culture and comic books. All right, that is going to do it. Thank you for everybody watching. If you like the show, please tell a friend about it. Subscribe, like, rate, review, and all of that fun stuff. That is going to do it for this episode of the Crimson Call Comic Club. This entire time, I've been reminding you that I have a comic book for sale. I've been picking out comics while picking my nose. I've been a uh, McDonald's ice cream machine. <laughs> I wish I could find a comic book to read. I've been spontaneously respirating. <laughs> to be continued.